In this video, I'll show you how I paint Yasha from the Mighty Nine. Hello Bitsbrew, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with another Critical Role painting tutorial. So this is the penultimate video in this series where I am painting Yasha from the Mighty Nine. So as always, just going for a quick tabletop standard here, just to get it ready and onto the uh, D&D battlefields. So, um, before we begin, as always, I just want to give a huge shout out and a massive thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon. And if you want to know what our Patreon is all about, there is a link in the description down below. And if you like all things wargaming related, miniature related, and um, painting related, um, then do feel free to hit, up, hit the subscribe button down below as well. And we do all kinds of different content um, related to wargaming and miniature stuff, D&D, etc. So yeah, um, let's get into painting Yasha. Okay, so here we have the Yasha miniature. And with all, as with all the other miniatures, I've primed her in a light grey primer. I've used the Grey Seer primer from GW, but you can literally use any primer you so wish. Um, you might even choose to start with a black primer for her, as she has a lot of darker colours, but I just want to keep them consistent with all of these. So anyway, Let's start with some Corvus Black, so there's a fair few black areas on this miniature. I'm going to start going over all her boots. I'm also going to do her little cape here as well. And then all the straps and stuff. And the sort of top half of her hair. So she has like a black to grey to white gradient on her hair which I'm sure will be quite fun to paint but yeah and this big sort of piece of belt there as well so I'll get all them colours locked in and then I'll be back for the next step so next I'm going to take some warp themed grey this is going to be for her trousers and also her braces around her wrists as well. So just be careful not to get any on the corpus black. So next I'm going to take some Night Lords blue and this is going to be for her sort of furs around the top of her boots so just be very careful not to get any on the boots or the warp fiend grey and then also the fur around the top of her cloak and you want to thin it down just a little bit more than usual to get into all the little nooks and crannies and then maybe do a couple of thin coats. So next up I'm going to paint some of the metal areas with um, Iron Hands Steel. So she has some chain mail down here. And also um, don't forget her sword on her back so top of it there and also just on there and put some on the bottom of the sheath as well like so so I'm not really 100% sure what colour her um, scabbard is for her sword, so I'm going to just take some Rhinox Hide. Obviously she has a lot of very dark colours on her. So I thought a nice dark brown. I didn't want to go black, because um, obviously her cloak is black. So I don't want it all to be the same colour. So just be very careful. You can always neaten up afterwards. 
just trying to get this little area along there like so so that's all of our main sort of main of darker base colours down I'm gonna just do the lighter colours on the hair next so next up is Dawnstone and I'm just gonna layer it onto the hair overlapping on the Corvus Black from earlier I'm going a little bit into where I haven't painted yet see it's quite thin I will do another another coat and it just gives you a little bit of a transition by doing it thinly like this I'm not too worried about getting like smooth as the transitions. Let's go a little bit down on her braids as well. Now because of a sculpt of a miniature, I'm sorry it's got a bit out of focus. It is a bit hard to see sort of where the fur sort of begins and the hair ends. So I'm just trying to do a pest with what I can see by eye. So the last colour on the hair is Corax White. You can take any white or very light grey if you want. I'm just using Corax White. And then just sort of do the tips of the braids and a little bit of hair at the back. At least I think there is. It's so hard to see on the sculpt. There's not a great deal of reference for these miniatures, but that's what we've got so far. So that's a few of the base colours down. So next up, I'm going to put a wash over all these colours with some non oil, which I thinned out slightly. I'm literally just going to slap it on, let it fall into all of the recesses. Don't worry about the skin areas. Um, if you get a little bit on there, it doesn't matter because we can paint over that but we just want to add a little bit of depth to all these colours now you'll notice that so much on the black areas of course but it's slightly darker than the Corvus than the Corvus black just get a little bit more on the brush I'm even going to put it on the hair as well and that will help bring out the detail and bring all them colours together on the hair and I'll go over the sword. Now it looks a little bit shiny on the camera but um, it isn't not so much in person and it won't dry sort of glossy anyway. Um, it's always worth giving them a good old shake before you use them otherwise they may dry shiny but usually they're okay. I just want a little bit more on the chainmail. I don't seem to be a lot of detail coming up on the chainmail. So Give her plenty of time to dry before you go on to the next steps. Okay, so before I highlight any of these areas, I want to work on the skin areas. So Yasha has very pale skin, so I'm going to start with a base of flayed one flesh. So she's got her arms and also her face and neck. Now thin this out, and I'm going to do a couple of thin coats. It's very important on the face not to just dollop it on really thickly. Okay, so next up I'll take some Palette Witch Flesh, and I'm going to go over most of this flesh areas, just leaving the original coat in the darkest recesses. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, um, it's quite a light colour. I thinned this out 
just a little bit as well. Again, we don't want to be obscuring detail, especially when it comes to the face. So yeah, I'm going to go over most of the face with this colour. Nice and thin. That seems to reflect off the lights a little bit. But hopefully you can see it. Just going around the usual areas, I'll do a little bit on the neck as well. So, cheeks, forehead, nose, chin, etc. Now let's give her a nice lighter skin tone. So next up we're going to take our Corvus Black again. Thin it out and very, very carefully paint a line on her chin. Like so. And then do some black around her eyes. Now, you're going to really want to thin it out even more than I have done here, I think, around the eyes because it's going to be very, very minimal. So, a nice tip on your brush if you can. And almost like a wash, sort of put it into them eyes. It's easier to do it this way and then come back in and paint some eyes in than it is to sort of try and paint just sort of all around them. So it's going to look like she's got a couple of black eyes at the moment, but the next step will neaten that back up. So that's how she's looking at the moment. I just want to do a little bit more. On that chin, careful, that's come a little bit too thick. So if you go too thick like I have, just come back and give me a skin tone and do a couple of thin coats over that to neaten that up. So I've done the eyes um, off camera as they're very fiddly. I took a little bit of back and forth and they're still not perfect, but they will do. Um, I'm going to start some highlights now, start with Cantor Blue on the fez. So this isn't the lightest of blues and it'll leave a little bit of a subtle highlight but I didn't want to go too bright on this blue because I still wanted it to be quite dark. So just very carefully go around and just get some of the raised areas. You could go back in with a lighter blue if you really wanted more contrast here, which I think in hindsight I might actually do that just for one extra step. So I'll jump up to Calador Sky, which is much lighter blue, but I'm thinning that out just so it don't dry too bright and I'm going to be a bit more selective with these highlights. So you see it goes on quite bright, but once it dries that won't look so bad. So just very selective little highlights, little dots and lines here and there. Now the um, detail isn't isn't great on the fairs, but you can sort of make up for it by putting these dots and lines all over to. Give you an illusion of texture, if not. There we go. Next up, we're going to highlight the warp fiend grey areas with slanish grey. So, with a thin line. Trousers there, and there's some creases there. I'm just going to do some little lines on. You can kind of see where the raised areas are, so just hit them. Again, I thinned it down a little bit, just a little bit of going across the top of the bracer, like so. But that's pretty much 
all I'm going to do with that. So next up I'm taking some Eschen Grey. This is to highlight all the Corvus Black areas, so run on a thin line on all the raised creases on here on our cloak. So this is thinned out and it's not that much brighter than the original colour so it'll be a very a very um, minor highlight very subtle but that's what we want and then go along with the little bandages on her boots with this colour as well and take some of the edge there you could even do a little bit on the hair if you want I'm going to do a tiny little bits on the hair but I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to blend in too much with the grey on there and then the next step I'll come in with a, another slightly lighter grey just to add a further highlight and I've also got these belts as well where we can run just a little edge highlight very carefully around them Okay, so take some Dawnstone, back with Dawnstone, and just add further little highlights. So just on the straps, little highlights, just tiny little ones on the most raised areas. Now if you're painting under lamps, normally you can see where the light from your lamp will hit the miniature and the most. That's where you want to be placing these highlights, I was a bit too thick with that one. Not the cloak, just sort of hit the tops. And these creases not going all the way down with them. Do some around the little holes as well. corner there like so and then I'll just take a little bit for the belt in the middle like so sorry I keep slipping off down that corner there we go so she's really coming along nicely now I'm gonna just add a few more Highlights and we're almost done. So next up I'm taking some Steel Legion Drab. Um, it's the closest brown I have to me and I think it will work quite well. I'm going to run a line thinned out of course. Then sword scabbard we've got some little bits of stitching as well I want to take a little sort of band going around there I'm going to paint that colour also and same up the other end with an edge highlight like so and then the last thing I'm going to do is just highlight the metallic areas so next up I'm going to take Rune Fang Steel I'll do some dots on the chainmail and then on the sword just a little bit on the top on the handle at the bottom just a tiny little minimum highlight and then all that's left to do is her base and the base is always painted with Avedon black but of course you can do your bases however you want when it comes to d and I just like to have just plain black bases because then you ain't got to worry about them fitting in with different environments. And so I'll take about three coats to get a nice solid coat. 
coverage. And here we have the finished Yasha miniature. So there's only one more miniature left to go in this series and that is Molly Mock. So yeah, I've really enjoyed um, painting these miniatures. They're different to what I'm used to with the GW stuff. And um, they're quite small and the detail isn't as crisp as you get from the GW stuff, but they're really, really lovely miniatures. And of course being Critical Role, which I absolutely love, so it's been really good fun to paint them. So yeah, um, I think I've saved the best till last for Molly Mock though, I'm really looking forward to him. Um, a lot more exciting colours than Yasha, but she was still fun to paint, regardless of the darker colours on her. And I hope um, you've enjoyed this little tutorial, a nice quick tabletop standard way of painting her and getting on the table fast. So yeah, um, if you did enjoy the video, please do feel free to give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.